Stalingrad in 3D, a two hour and 10 minute film, a 2013 release, 2.35 to one aspect ratio. So you will get the black bars at the top and the bottom. If you're watching this on a television set, this film is gorgeous, is it? We're gonna talk about it. Uh, this is filmed in 3D. This is 5.6 on uh, International Movie Database, 50% critic score in Rotten Tomatoes, 41% uh, audience approval score on Rotten Tomatoes. Directed by Fedor Bondarchik. I may have mispronounced that, forgive me. The only star in here that I know is Thomas Critchman. He starred in U571, also in a movie called In Enemy Hands, and he starred in Resident Evil Apocalypse. Uh, this, is, this was filmed in St. Petersburg on a set that took six months to build. 400 crew hands to build this set, $4 million spent on this set. It is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, this is the first 3D IMAX film to come out of Russia. It's the first 3D IMAX film to come out of anywhere outside of North America. It is the second 3D film to come out of Russia. The first 3D film came out of Russia in 1941. These are actual uh, T-34 Russian tanks mocked up to look like Panzers. Uh, Stalingrad was an oil hub. And you know Hitler wanted to capture this oil hub to starve off the fuel supply. Uh, this I'm going to tell you a little bit about this movie. I'm going to tell you the good, and I'm going to tell you about the bad, and I'm going to talk about the 3D. I want to tell you the good first because I don't want to lose you if I tell you the bad. Okay? Uh, to me, this I will tell you this though. I think it's mistitled. Stalingrad. Uh, I was expecting an epic battle over the city, about the city, but it really isn't. Um, this movie could be titled Two Buildings, Two Troops, or Two Buildings, Two Platoons. Or actually, One Building, Two Platoons, Two Women. That would be an excellent title for this movie, be a little bit more accurate. Um, let's talk a little bit about the plot. You got, you know, you got these uh, Russian soldiers that are trying to hang on to a building, a, a strategic building. Uh, this was an actual building uh, in Russia. In fact, it was said that Germany lost more uh, take, trying to take Paris than they lost to taking this building. They lost a lot trying to take this building. Um, so you got these Russian troops here. Uh, they're hanging on this building and then across the courtyard or I don't know they give you the distance a thousand meters away is another building with Germans in it and they're trying to get past this building and that's basically the the gist of the movie uh, you have a woman on the Russian side one one gal 19 year old uh, brunette lady that's been living in the building the whole time the soldiers move in and she becomes more or less a nurse a mother uh, and a lover uh, to this this group of men and then on the German side you have the Germans over there they're living with a bunch of Russian men and women and children and uh, there's a, a romantic thing that goes on over there with a blonde Russian woman and a German captain although that is a little more uh, forceful okay so listen you know I'm 64 years old I've seen a lot of war movies in my life this is a very peculiar war movie. It's one like I've never seen before. Uh, this is a drama, a high stakes drama. It shows the horrors of war. It shows the mental breakdown of men in war. Um, this, like I said, the sets are absolutely fantastic. You feel like you're there. Um, you know, and if you got it, you have to look at this movie as if the Russians are our guys. These are our guys because that's how the movie's made. You know, we make American war movies and we, we, we pump up our guys and our side and we show the heroics of our side. And that's what they're doing here for the Russians. So if you're looking at it from the outside like it's just two armies that we're not associated with, some of the things that are said can almost be comical and it shouldn't be taken that way. Um, and it really shows the how war works on the mental the mind the mental aspect of war you know you got this russian guy says to a gal uh, i fell in love with you two days ago and it's almost comical but when you when you see what's going on and you realize these guys you know they may not live tomorrow they may not live today uh and there's one woman in there how they can how they could fall in love with that woman and then on the german side the captain goes out and he goes into a battle almost loses his life comes in and there's this 
beautiful blonde uh, Russian peasant girl that he's more or less keeping as a love interest and bringing her food and he just kind of just walks and rips her clothes off and it's like oh man here we go and that's war that's how they per portray this war uh, this 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 human element this this it really comes across here there's some really really uh, dramatic touching moments in here I teared up at one point really dramatic uh, some really good scenes some dramatic scenes uh, talks about you know how, how how Stalingrad went through through this 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 time or how they buried their dead and this this young 19 year old Russian girl uh, she has a birthday and it's a real touching touching moment um, there are some fantastic scenes in here so that's the good that's the good let's talk about the bad the dubbing is the bad the dubbing's absolutely atro atrocious it's horrible uh, you, the first 20 minutes I'm like ah you know you're watching this movie you're seeing the lips move you know they're dubbing it but it almost feels like there's two guys standing in a room with two microphones you know trying to say what's being said on the screen and it, it really it doesn't come across very well at all and I think that's where it took it on the chin by the audience score the dubbing was terrible and, and dubbing can be good I mean you look at uh, Cowboy Bebop Japanese anime the dubbing is fantastic it's fantastic you don't even think it's dubbing and then you come to this well you know you kind of get over the dubbing here uh, in the first 20 minutes after 20 minutes you kind of if you let yourself get vested in the Russian soldiers and you can if you look at these guys that you're that there are guys you can get vested in it and then the dubbing kind of it's acceptable after a while uh, there is some translation lost in the dubbing though it's like why did he say that you know why did he say that it didn't make sense it's just a translation uh, tra uh, translation lost uh, and it happens um, there is some oh shit moments in this movie there's some like why did he just do that you know I mean some gruesome and there's some gruesome stuff that the Germans do and it really hits home I mean I'm telling you this this is a very unique war movie it's drama it's not large battle sequences the acting is very very good the music score is great the music score really fills in good um, and I thought it wrapped up pretty well there's a couple of subplots in here that probably didn't need to be told um, other than that I really enjoyed this movie and I'm probably gonna watch it again and I do recommend that you pick it up let's talk about the 3d now this was filmed in 3D, so you'd expect it to be really, really good. And the 3D is good. Um, it's, it's that window look. It's that looking into the window. And with these superb sets, uh, you really get a great, great amount of depth. The colors are muted. It's war colors. It's, uh, you know, just like a lot of blues and hues. And, and a lot of ash is floating around in the room. You know, for being filmed in 3D, you would think there'd be a lot of stick outs and pop outs, but there isn't. And that was the director's choice. That's what he chose to do. And it works well, because it makes you feel like you're there. I'd rather watch this in 3D than 2D, absolutely. The best 3D is gonna be ashes floating around in the room. You get the ashes coming down right in front of your face. Um, you're not gonna get a lot of things flying out. Nothing flies out of the screen not going to get any pop outs you're going to get some stick outs or some guns that barely stick out of the screen there's a couple really really good dramatic 3d uh, scenes plane coming in that crashes and when it's coming in it really kicked up the 3d it's a phenomenal 3d scene of this plane crash and then there's a tank that fires a shell that is just oh my gosh absolutely incredible in 3d so that's my take on this movie um, it's a it was a very moving drama uh, like I say it moved me uh, sometimes to tears and other times it was uh, it was like oh my god I can't believe I'm watching this this is this is this is the horrors of war so and with so with the 3d and everything you know it's a Russian movie and I got to tell you something man they really did a fantastic job uh, especially on the sets so that's my take on this on uh, Stalingrad in 3d I'm gonna give it for the movie itself for like a war movie an army movie war movie I'm gonna give it uh, four and a quarter stars out of five um, for the 3d I'm gonna give it 3.75 stars out of five I think they could have gave a little bit more negative parallax 
Um, there are times where it's almost kind of flat that it didn't need to be. They did miss some wonderful opportunities here. Um, but other than that, that's my take on it. So uh, what did you think? Did you see it? Did you see it in 3D? Did you see it in 2D? Did you see it at the theaters? How does this rate on your uh, ratings of, uh, of war movies? How does this rate? Uh, leave some comments below. Let me know. Hit that like and subscribe button. I want you to have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, God bless.